The following video demonstrates how you can achieve full control over your SLA builds using NetFab in addition to Formlabs Preform. It includes specific use cases that show how you can easily maximize your Formlabs user experience. Hi, my name is Andreas Nicolescu and I'm a technical sales specialist additive manufacturing here at Autodesk. I am very happy to guide you through the next 10 minutes. Before we begin, I would like to introduce NetFab. NetFab is our end-to-end -end solution for any kind of additive manufacturing workflows. It can cover pretty much anything from CAD import over latticing and optimization to repairing and even support generation and or simulation. Our included connections to the most important 3D printers, such as Formlabs, allow out-of-the-box build export capabilities. In the following, I would like to give you four very common use cases in which NetFab can provide a quick and easy solution to your problem. So we are starting right here in NetFab with our Formlabs Form 3 already open. As we can see, we already have two parts in our build. Apparently, there is an issue with one of the parts as we have this very big warning sign right here in the bottom corner. Our platform overview shows us that our dental piece right here has an incorrect mesh and requires fixing. As we can see as well, the part is basically just an open surface that we got right from the dentist. If we want to print it, we would have to prepare it to a closed mesh. First of all, we're going to reduce the size of the model as we are mostly interested in the teeth and we do not want any of the remaining gums. So we can basically cut it off right away. After cutting the sides, we also want to cut the part horizontally to prepare the foundation that is going to be created in the next step. In the repair module, we can now see how the big yellow edge is defining the open contour of our part. First, we are going to remove all noise shells that may be a side product of our cutting activities so far. The main part here in this module is the extrusion in Z direction so that we can get a good enough base for our solid model. After the extrusion, we have enough material that we can work with to create a solid. We can use a plane to cut and stitch the parts and by that finish our fixing process. As we can see, the part is now a closed solid model. That means our fixing process was successful. But that also means that we now have time to look after the other part in our build and see how we can improve that as well. The second part in our build is this simple bracket. As it seems, the support that we find on this part is rather massive and by that consumes quite a bit of space on our build platform. I would propose that we take a look and see how we can optimize our support in a way that it still holds the part but can be produced faster and more effectively. In order to do so, we have entered our support module, which gives you access to a variety of different support types. These can be defined manually or fully automated using customizable support scripts. Scripts contain many different settings that include clusters. These are basically defining the areas that require support and the support types and geometries itself. We're now going to choose a support that uses a bouquet or a tree support structure instead of this adaptive lattice. This is going to save us a lot of time and keep the support as strong as we need it to be. As our current parts are now repaired and supported, we should probably add more parts to fill our build platform. 
Let's see how that works. I would like to go for a simple impeller that I have created earlier on in Fusion 360. As you can see, NetFab accepts a variety of different file types, not just mesh types such as 3MF or STL, but also the most important CAD types such as Inventor, CATIA NX, and of course STEP and IGES, you name it. Working with CAD files is one of my favorite things to do in NetFab. During the import, you may define the tessellation level of your part. This is going to define how accurate your model is represented in NetFab. Let's take medium accuracy for once, which is going to save computing capacity. Typically, you would now go ahead and perform all of your different activities based on this tessellation level. As soon as you finish your data preparation, you can always go back and retessellate to a higher level so that you can export using the best possible part quality. I think we might have one more part to work on. I have added another bracket to our Form 3. As you can see, this one is pretty large and bulky. It is pretty much going to consume a lot of build time and resin as well. Therefore, I would like to facilitate printing by applying a lattice to the part. I have already made some preparations up front. I have divided the parts into different segments that will now go into NetFab's lattice commander easily via drag and drop. In here, we can now specify which of these parts are going to be used as a lattice, as a skin, or as a full volume. Let's start with a small part here on the left. This one, I would like to be kept as is, full volume, so no changes here from our side. The larger part, however, is first going to be replaced by a lattice. With Lattice Commander, you have the ability to use a variety of different lattice geometries that can be applied in different sizes, thicknesses, angles, and so on. The lattice itself can also be edited. I'm going to show how to automatically delete all open beams so that all beams are connected to a main grid. This is also going to reduce the amount of beams that exist. The lattice itself is not really helping us at the moment as we are missing the outer geometry of the part. For that, we, we are going to create two additional skins on top of our lattice. We are able to delete faces that we do not require so that the lattice can be exposed to the outside and the resin can flow out. We want to do the same thing for the small geometry here in the center. The only difference is that we want to treat it as a whole later. No lattice should be penetrating this geometry in the final component. When everything is set, we are ready to create a new component based on our skin and lattice combination. We can now take this to our Form 3 and replace its predecessor. With all of our parts now being prepared, it seems our build is ready to go. Our last step in NetFab is the export in the .form file format that can now be sent to your printer using Formlabs Preform. In summary, we have seen four different ways how NetFab can enrich your Formlabs workflow, helping you to get full control over your parts and processes, either by fixing files, applying different kinds of support, using CAD file formats, or adding complex lattice geometries. Thank you very much.